Okay. What is the motivation not to play Kevin De Bruyne? What is he thinking? Well, there were a lot of talking at the stadium. We tried to find out. We were running around the corridors. And before the game, Guardiola said that was just for tactical reason. OK, this is a tactical reason that you leave the only player out that can find Erling Haaland, who will score more goals. OK, that is interesting. Uh, and when we know that this comes from a week, then it looks like there is a sudden departure of Cancelo who is one of, has been one of the most important players in the way Guardiola uh, wants to play. That is quite interesting. But I, I just want to say something to, to what Shaka is saying there. I think there is a lot of, and you said it well done, there's a lot of concerns. But first of all, in, in the first half, there were three or four runs when Haaland tried to go in behind them and, and the midfielders were on the right direction going forward. But I think that Manchester City got too many touches in midfield. They always say one or two touches too much. That has nothing to do with changing the way Pep Guardiola wants to play. It has nothing to do something that nobody's tell them not to do. That is just bad decision making. When De Bruyne came on, the first thing he did, he tried to find Erling Haaland. That was more or less the only time they tried to find him in that game. But this is not to make this something of a Haaland problem and Manchester City or a City problem is, is with Haaland. I think that it, there is something in this Manchester City team at the moment, I mean, there is something wrong in the kingdom of Denmark, Shakespeare wrote. There is something wrong in the kingdom of Manchester City at the moment. I'm not 100% sure what it is. There is something holding them back in the team. Yes, they got a lot of possession. Yes, they have a lot of the ball and they're, they're doing, try to do their st stuff. <laughs> but it's not good enough at the moment. And yes... It was good for Tottenham to play Manchester City today. That was good for them. It was good for Sean Dyche yesterday as well to play an Arsenal team that they can have a bit go at them. But Manchester City at the moment, there is a lack of intensity. There is a lack of speed. And there is something wrong. And I think it's, it's very, very hard to define that. But they will, they will lose more goals. Uh, they will lose more games if this keeps uh, continuing. I'm going to ask you the same question, Frank, because I still don't quite know the answer as to mm. why you don't play Kevin De Bruyne. Well, we're not in the dressing room, you know, uh, uh, working with uh, Guardiola alongside him, you know, uh, and seeing, you know, maybe De Bruyne or even Gundogan not being at their tops. But I totally agree with you. When I see Silva today, Bernardo Silva, who I think is a very fan is a fantastic player, but... It's not, he's getting a little bit light right now. And Rodri, Rodri being so horrendous today. I mean, mm. it's never seen Rodri being so on top of the bad pass that he made uh, and considered the goal. He was lost. He, wasn't, uh, he didn't put any impact into the, into the midfield. And when you put, what the point of putting four forwards if you're not giving them the ball and the right balls? And who, uh, who can allow, uh, because of his technique, to give good passes... Two players, De Bruyne and Gundogan. And you see them warming up, you know, on the touchline for like an hour. And you say, when, Pep, when are you going to put them on? Because they need, they, you need them. And I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe Guadalajara is the only person who can answer that question. Why you didn't put De Bruyne and Gundogan? Yes, they, they're not maybe at their best. But don't tell me that Lewis, because of the fullback coming in the middle of the park when they have the ball can be the playmaker. That's not possible. He's too young. He's not De Bruyne. He's not good to gun. He hasn't got the experience of, of those players. And he cannot serve Alan, Alvarez, Mares, and Grealish. And, and uh, I don't get the tactic. I don't get the tactic of Guadalajara today because it was, for me, all wrong because of those two players missing, for sure. Just... Am I just being naive? Mm. You've got a big striker, uh -huh. scores lots of goals. Right. Why don't you just cross the ball in and uh, then he scores? Uh, no, no, Dan, you're not being no. naive. So because why complicate the, everything? The, well, and, and that, I think, is a question that goes beyond Ederson not playing long mm. balls to Erling Haaland. And in the bigger picture, why do you not utilize perhaps the best out-and-out striker that there is in the world right now, who's Erling Haaland, utilize his skill set? Right? If you have this guy, use him. When he runs in behind, play him the ball. He may not get to one, he may not get to two, but he gets to the third one, it's a goal. When he makes a run inside the 18-yard box, 
cross him the ball. Again, he may not get to the first one. He may not get to the second one. But the third one is a goal. It's almost as if this team, by design, like they have a shot caller. When they're about to cross the ball, it just goes, hey, no, 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 no. Huh? <laughs> Somebody has space to whip the ball <laughs> no. into the box. But, huh? It's no. time to whip it in. Time to cross the ball. No, we turn right back around, and no. we cut it inside, and we go to the left, and we go further to the left, and we bring it back this way. The only other thing, the other thing that I'll say is this. This team has no width, right? You have Udin Maris on the right-hand side, but when you look on the left-hand side, you know exactly what Grealish is going to do. He's going to dribble, 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 and he's going to cut to the inside, and then a pass back. When he comes inside, and there is that whole channel down the left-hand side, there is nobody that provides you that width down the left. And so everything becomes crowded towards the middle. Rico Look, Lewis is in the middle. Everybody's in the middle. No but, servicing to Haaland. No goals. Here we go. We, we lose but, one but nothing. I, if I may say, Dan, it, it's quite interesting because, yes, you're a bit naive when you say that it's the only thing that they can score goals is to make crosses for Haaland because that has not been 100% the way they want to do it. But I'm with Al that they have to find his runs, they have to find the space, and they have to find the space earlier. I think I see the problem much bigger at Manchester City at the moment. I, I think they want to cross the ball when they see one. I think they want to play someone if they see someone. But for me, Manchester City at this moment, and I say Manchester City, and where I maybe should have said Pep Guardiola, but now it looks like a team that's got this identity crisis. We are not sure what they absolutely want and if you see that the team selections lately like it today it's a good example will de bruyne de bruyne is not playing well it's for tactical reason okay let's believe pep guardiola that is a tactical reason that he is not playing i see a identity crisis by manchester city at the moment and if you compare that with arsenal i didn't see an identity crisis against everton i just just saw they lost they had a bad game mm. my norwegian friend had a bad game so a lot of bad performances there I see Manchester United now. I mean, they were not impressive against Crystal Palace, but they got an identity. We see exactly what they want to do. And what has been the strength of Manchester City is not there now. There is one game they try to do this and another game they try to do th that. And then the consequences is lack of ball through to Erling Haaland, lack of crosses and, and so on. They never had that left-sided midfielder who uh, 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 Grealish, uh, another type on the left side that would do those crosses. But they found another way at the moment, they don't. I don't see how they want to play at the moment. The, the, the thing for me, and, and I, I take Jan's point, I, there, there's clearly an identity crisis, as, as, as Jan put it. But the one thing you know is not the solution is leaving out Kevin De Bruyne, <laughs> to, to your point. Well, I've asked that. Well, <laughs> but, and, 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 and that's my, because, because Manchester City have some very big games to come. Champions League, etc., and you can guarantee that Kevin De Bruyne will be playing in those. I don't know, Shaq. I, I, I don't know. This is a big game. They've they had a week off. They got a week well, off. And, now and, 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 that, and that's, the, that's the amazing thing for me. I think I, I think without question, Kevin De Bruyne is still one of the best midfielders in the league. Manchester City's best midfielder. He plays in the big games. I think this was a big game for a number of reasons. One, because of the Arsenal Everton result, and if you see Arsenal lose. You going against Spurs, you have an opportunity to close the gap to what will be five points if Arsenal win their game in hand. But all of a sudden, you, you can close that gap to five points with two games to come against Arsenal. And the one complaint or one concern around this Arsenal team is how can those young players handle that pressure? Can those young players handle two games against Manchester City knowing that if they lose both, all of a sudden... They're playing catch up with Manchester City, so this was a, this was a, as as big an opportunity a single game in City season in hoping to retain the title as you could hope for, and you leave out who I feel is the best midfielder in, in English football. And to your point, Shaq, because of how big game this was, what was really surprising is to see a Manchester City team that had no life, mm. Mm. that had yeah. no soul. Yeah. Nothing what dynamic. Was wrong with today? Well, nothing explosive. Nothing happening at speed. Everything so slow and predictable. And if you're Spurs, you must have yeah, felt like least. you're the fastest man alive. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.